Turning now to the 2024 presidential race and a new debate over a debate. Former President Trump and Vice President Harris are scheduled to go head to head on September the 10th on ABC. But a new social media post from Trump and reported concerns over the rules by the Harris campaign is now casting doubts on whether it's going to happen at all. Joining us now, NBC News senior White House correspondent Gabe Gutierrez, NBC's Garrett Haake. They have the latest on the Trump Vance campaign. So, Garrett, what exactly did Trump say about the debate, whether it's going to happen or not? Well, look, he, this is in an overnight truth social post in which he largely complained about ABC News, the host of that debate. He called them fake news. ABC complained about several correspondents by name, uh, some who were participating, some who were probably not, and sort of wonders aloud, why would I do the debate against Kamala Harris on that network? He also uh, says sort of half correctly that Harris had turned down debate offers on other networks. Some of those are still pending. The bottom line here, Jose, this reads to me like Donald Trump essentially working the refs ahead of this debate, kind of complaining about the coverage he gets from that network, the personalities he doesn't like as a way to perhaps lower expectations for himself and muddy the waters about questions that might be asked and how his performance might be handled if and when he does show up for that debate on the 10th. So, uh, Gabe, meanwhile, what is the Harris campaign concern? Well, uh, Jose, separate from that true social post overnight, the Harris campaign is now raising issues about the rules for this debate, and the Trump campaign uh, is responding. So, essentially, the, ha the Harris campaign now says that it wants hot mics during the entire debate. And, Jose, you'll remember that uh, is remarkable because... Uh, a couple of uh, months ago, uh, the Biden team actually did not want hot mics during the debate. They wanted muted mics when the other candidate was speaking. Now, this is a statement from uh, the Harris campaign. It says, in part, the vice president is ready to deal with Trump's constant lies and interruptions in real time. Trump should stop hiding behind the mute button. Now, uh, the Trump campaign is uh, firing back and saying that it is the Harris team, which is asking for more rule changes, including um, seat, sitting down during the, the, the debate and also referring to notes and also opening statements <coughs> as well. Now, I just spoke with someone from uh, the Harris team who denies those rule changes. But as uh, Garrett mentioned, this uh, seems to be an ongoing dispute. And right now, it's anybody's guess uh, whether you know this debate will happen on September 10th. It appears you know, both both campaigns haven't said yet that they're backing away officially, but uh, it does appear that former President Trump is trying to work the refs. At the um, but some of that is, I'm told, it's it's debate prep because that debate is just around the horizon. Or maybe it's not. Well, we'll see. We'll get into that in just a moment. So that was the vice president's schedule for the week. Here's what Trump is doing. He's going to be barnstorming. He and his campaign are barnstorming the Midwest this week. The former president will be in Michigan later today, while Senator J.D. Vance will be in the Great Lakes state on Tuesday. Trump will head back to Michigan on Thursday before heading to Wisconsin that night. The former president will end the week with a trip to Pennsylvania on Friday. But, as Caddy just hinted, Trump is suggesting that he may back out of next month's debate with the vice president. In a Truth Social post late last night, Trump railed against ABC News, which is the host of the September 10th debate in Philadelphia, accusing the network of being biased against him. He wrote this, why would I do the debate against Kamala Harris on that network? Adding, they've got a lot of questions to answer, stay tuned. It's the stay tuned, isn't it? It's one of his go-to. It's like, you know, Let's The Apprentice tuned. all over again. Yeah, building the Next suspense. week. Next week, we'll see if we debate. So in May, of course, let's remember, Trump agreed to two debates with an unspecified Democratic opponent. There's no name listed there. But that was when President Joe <coughs> Biden, of course, was still the party's presumptive nominee. So let's bring into the conversation here columnist and associate editor for The Washington Post, David Ignatius, as well as NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent, Ali Vitali, who just saw on way too early. So, David, let's get your take to start um, with this suggestion from the former president that, well, maybe I won't do that debate after all. There's been a lot of chatter in Trump world that he is not eager to, to square off with the vice president. We know that he has had sometimes has trouble with taking questions from from women, from powerful women. We've seen that throughout his political career. But she's not just a powerful woman. She's a prosecutor, and the idea of a prosecutor versus a convicted felon seems to be one that he's not particularly excited about. So I think what we've seen in the days before the convention and certainly after is that 
Trump just doesn't know how to deal with Kamala Harris. He doesn't know how to pigeonhole her. His usual language of belittlement, uh, derision isn't working. There is in the country this sense, I think, of we've been relieved from uh, an election that people were dreading between two candidates who've run before uh, an acrimonious, nasty convention, a sense of the the country locked with these these two older older Americans, and then suddenly the, there was a, a convention that really was a joyous event, and that said we've turned a page, and Tr- Trump can't figure out how to turn his own page. Uh, I, I think as he as he plans for the, the debate, he has to appreciate that she is charismatic and charming on television in a way that he fancies he is. That that, that the, the camera loves Kamala Harris. Uh, she, she's she's learned in her the cadence of her speeches, the way she presents herself to to be a, a formidable TV presence. Donald Trump knows TV. He's smart enough to know he's got a problem here. He hasn't figured it out. And we of course saw in the Atlanta debate that was sort of the downfall of President Biden's uh, campaign. But Ali, this will be a different one because it also will highlight the age issue, which now is an advantage to Democrats, as Harris yeah. is nearly two decades younger than Trump. But if the polls are right, and we've been expressing a little skepticism here this morning, uh, Harris is winning by a little, but winning. So therefore, doesn't Trump need this debate to try to change momentum? He does. And candidly, I share Caddy's polling PTSD after 2016. I think we're not alone in that. And there's reason to be skeptical. It's also why you saw the vice president get off stage at the DNC. And when she passed some of our colleagues backstage, she immediately said, well, now we have more work to do. And that's my understanding of the mood within her camp right now and the mood within the larger Democratic establishment, which is they learned the lessons of 2016. They're not going to take positive vibes and a positive attitude for granted, they are still going to get on the ground and make sure that there are people knocking doors, getting out the vote. It's why I'm so interested, yes, in the funding, fundraising numbers, but also in the ways that they have seen on the ground in states like Pennsylvania, in states like Georgia, volunteers who have never volunteered before, signing up to do shifts, getting on phone banks, doing text messages. That's the actual stuff that's going to be the meat and potatoes of turning this energy into actual tangible votes. But then, and John Allen and I were just talking about the stakes of the debate and how much things have changed on way too early. This idea that in the last debate, it was Biden who had so much to prove on his age, on his acuity, trying to assuage those concerns, which we know ultimately were not assuaged to the point where he is now no longer the nominee. Those are now the things that Trump has to work towards as he wavers on whether or not he's going to get on this debate stage. I think we all knew that he would try to play this will he or won't he game in terms of this September 10th debate. Now that he's facing Kamala Harris, the landscape has completely shifted against him. And he now has to prove against questions of his age, his acuity, his viability, while also not veering into what he often does, which is sexist and racist attacks Mm -hmm. that don't earn him any new votes. Uh, But very interesting back and forth here in the final. I mean, that that Fallon statement is clearly written to get a rise out of Donald Trump himself, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I mean, after this summer, let no one ever say again that debates do not matter, which is why <laughs> which is why you are having this fight over these small details. And what's also really interesting is not just that she's used the hot mic to great effect in the past, but also you have to remember Joe Biden wanted the mute button for the first debate. They set those rules for that first debate. And because they were because they didn't want a repeat of the first debate from 2020 when Trump just sort of ranted and raved. So this was the the Joe Biden's idea. The problem was that then the Trump campaign was like, OK, we're actually going to like make him as as Fallon in, uh, indicated disciplined. And it actually made him seem more sober than he often comes across. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, look, when uh, Kamala took over the ticket, the, they try, they're trying to have it both ways. Remember, when Kamala took over the ticket, they told the Trump campaign, we've already agreed to the ABC debate on September 10th. And they were like, what, saying, well, we can neg- renegotiate a little bit on what the debate is. Now they're flipping it and saying, well, just because you agree to the debate didn't doesn't mean we agreed to the rules. Look, th- this she wants the hot mic moment because what she's had, if you remember the first debate with Joe Biden, the I'm speaking, she loves to create these little memeable moments that, you know, are kind of based off stock lines that she's practiced and kind of her team is prepared for. They've already the T-shirts printed up. So she's trying to draw out Trump with some of this stuff. Yeah. At the end of the day, though, does this really matter? Does at the, When they go to debate, that's what I mean, the American people deserve a debate. They deserve to hear the issues being fought 
to have a discussion. So I don't think at the end of the day this matters. I think it's just more political insider yeah. baseball stuff. It's fun to talk about it's, all yeah, the yeah, things. Three weeks. It's, yeah, it's, it's what we're going to talk about <laughs> the next week. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. I think the important thing is to have a debate and to have them have a discussion about the issues. So we're getting fallout from Donald Trump's recent cowardly move. And not only do we know more details about it, like why he's planning to skip town and avoid the debate, but also Kamala responding, basically making it clear that Donald is a coward, that he's trying to use media being critical of his far right agenda as bias when it's just decent reporting. Uh, we also know that if anything, the media has been biased towards helping Trump seemingly by 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 making up fake scandals around walls and Harris and all of that. But but also um, that the, the rules as they would be set up would simply benefit Donald Trump to make him artificially look um, less insane. To, to be charitable, right? That, that, that they're trying to set up a system that would make him look more presidential and less criminal than he actually is. But here's the thing. All of this really demonstrates that Harris is the one willing to debate. Harris has been the most consistent on this. Look, I understand it is a weird election. We've not really seen anything like this in modern history where, you know, uh, two candidates debated and then one candidate is no longer in the race. And then a new candidate, although it was that candidate's vice president, uh, comes in to step in. Uh, but here's the thing. The debate was scheduled and Kamala has been very clear. The debate was not really Biden versus Trump scheduled. The debate was the Republican nominee for president, whoever that may be, versus the Democratic nominee for president, whoever that may be. Right. And that didn't change. It's still scheduled to be the Republican nominee versus the Democratic nominee. And Harris has been clear from the start. We may negotiate other debates, but for now, we have this one scheduled debate. I will be there. I will follow the rules. And Donald can show up if he wants. So Harris is not only mocking Trump, she's being very clear with the voters, and importantly, that she's following the agreed upon schedule and that if he doesn't show up, he's the one breaking it. Now, I think if he doesn't show, Kamala should go and give a speech and maybe do a town hall style event just to rub the salt into the wound. But for now, she's playing her cards perfectly. 